Aquila and myself. Amen. And she's so excited. She wants me to go first. Amen. <laughs> All right. But we're going to just give her about a little uh, time just to make a little bit of adjustments and um, get us get settled from rushing in from the storm. We thank God everybody made it in safe and everything. And all those we you know trailing in shortly. And um, so we're going to um, let's get ready to make way for I need a microphone for her. Oh, she, he's getting it um, thing for us. Amen. And um, get a mic for her. Then you want the handheld or you want the lapel? What's, what's going to be? OK, great. That'll be fine. All the people are coming on through. And, um, you know, one thing we, we, we learn is that we master ourselves when time doesn't flow the way we want it to flow. Uh, we don't get on off balance when we don't start on time things to that degree because the only thing perfect is heaven and you're born again spirit that's the only thing that's perfect amen and so um we're gonna go ahead and get ready to get started it's underneath that little uh, mouse thing you got it yeah it's underneath that little mouse pad that's in there yeah mm -hmm. and so uh, so we can get the monitors up and everything and get it ready and so let's go ahead and receive sister quilla as she come forth and be a minister. But I'm going to tell you how y'all really been blessed by her teaching. It's, it's a great blessing. And that, that nugget, that treasure just been hidden there for a while. And we, I don't know we're the first ones, but I feel like we're the first one who discovered this great treasure. So we welcome Sister Quilla to the podium at this moment. Amen. Toasting. Amen. They got your mic ready. I think you might hoop for us tonight. You got any, got no homiletics and uh, <laughs> okay. You got some Advil for you too, cause that'll hurt your back. Amen. Yeah, All right. Testing. Good evening, everyone. All right. Thank you for everyone that has come out tonight and in the storm. Uh, the storm will pass us over. That's a good thing. I just say that's a little bit of the talking from the good Lord. I love to hear him speak. We've been asking for him to speak. So when he speaks, I count it all glory. Thank you, Pastor, for asking me to come back. And I am so pleased that everyone here um, enjoyed last week. And I hope to do it justice. But so here goes. Last week. We talked about Kilimanjaro. How many people, some people may be new, might be your first time if you're online, and we talked about the importance of leaving a legacy. And we talked about uh, the person that got to the bottom of the mountain that had nothing, and we talked about the person that got to the bottom of the mountain and had a little bit of help when he got there and some guidance, some mentors that had climbed the path before and were leaving nuggets. So I'm going to kind of um, maybe kind of take it up from there. But tonight, because I am a visual learner, I do best when I can not only read it, but hear it and see it. I came up with another little demonstration. I don't know that it's as good as my Kilimanjaro from middle school, but we shall see. I'm going to ask Pastor to come up, and I need two volunteers. One, two, come on up. I've got Pastor and two more volunteers. Come on up on uh, where they can see you, where everybody can see you. Okay. Volunteer number one, we have to ask you to do something. This is a new mask, and we have to ask you to do a blindfold because we don't want you to do any cheating on this. Okay. We ain't gonna fall off the stage. No, no, no. That's that's why you're here. We can move her back, Pastor. There you go. And this is uh, Miss Michelle, one of my best friends. I'm gonna ask you to hold this for me, Michelle. All right. And Pastor, you just have to sit there for a moment. I'm going to oh. ask her to hold this. Okay, there we go. All right, now somewhere on this stage, we have Sister Michelle holding a bowl that is filled with cotton balls and rocks. The rocks represent the problems that we have, the things that come up against us, and the cotton balls are the good, easy times that are the way things flow. They're not hard to lift. But I want to know, from where you stand right now, can you see anything? Not out good. No? No. 
Do you think you could get to any of those cotton balls or to where Michelle is and take this spoon that is right here and get only cotton balls in this bowl? That's the spoon. Yeah, you have to get to where Michelle is. Nope, nope, from here by yourself. You have to get to where you think Michelle is and get cotton balls only in that bowl. Do you think you can do that? Can Michelle say anything? <laughs> nope. She can't say a word. I'm back here. Okay. Only the spoon. How's that going for you? How is that going for you? Not very well. Okay, this time, Pastor, you can stop. You can stop. I want you to stand right beside her, and you are her inheritance and her legacy. You have given her your legacy. You're, she can't see you because you're not here anymore, but you get to help her get all the cotton balls that you can possibly help her. Any way you can think of helping her get only cotton balls into her bowl. Okay. Ready? Mm -hmm. Go. Wow, look at that. You can use anything, Pastor. You can use two hands. You can move stuff out of the way. You're, you're the legacy. I'm the legacy. I just take it just like that. However you can get it on that spoon. I got you spoon. Yeah, you have to get it on the spoon, but however you can get cotton balls on that spoon, it's good. Uh-oh. Huh? <laughs> Into each life a little rock must fall, right? Yeah, right I could get a little rocky sometimes. Okay, and now I want you to stop, Pastor. Okay. Can you turn this way towards me, towards the camera? Can you see how many cotton balls are in there? There are a few rocks. That's life. Life is going to give you a few rocks. But this time, Pastor, the, third, the second time you do it, I want her to take her mask off and you to help her. And so you're working together. Okay, okay now help her get as many rocks as any kind of way, as, as cotton balls as you can. A few rocks, and you can help her, Pastor. Pick some up and put them in there for her. See how many she can get in there. <laughs> In a way, yeah. All right, we're going to do a countdown. Let's do it. Ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. All right. Let them see your bowl. Look at that. Look at that. That is with a legacy. That is with inheritance helping you. The reason I took the mask off is because even though she might not have been able to see Pastor Harvey in the beginning the first time, when you take the mask off, you're seeing it in a clearer vision with the Lord's help. That's seeing blind just with a little bit of a legacy or heritage and seeing with the Lord's vision to help you, you can get more of those good moments in your life no matter what you're doing. Fewer rocks, more of the cotton balls, the good stuff. Let's give him a big hand for helping us. Thank you, thank you. That was my visual when I first started thinking about coming back talking to you guys. And I, I had lots of things that I wanted to do, but all week from last, last week, that was the visual that kept coming to me. So I wanted to be sure and share that when we want to talk about why a legacy is important, why an inheritance, an inheritance is important. And we, we talked about the Bible, Bible verse where it says, a good man leaves an inheritance to his children's children while a sinner, his wealth is stored up for the righteous. I think that was Proverbs that we saw that in last week. But this week I'm going to give you one more little story. And it's about a little hen called a little red hen. This little red hen decided she was going to eat some bread. And she went out with, you know, her little seed that had been given her. And she asked all the other hens to come help her plant. Nobody wanted to plant. Nobody. So she put her seed down and she started pecking with her beak and she made all the rows and she put her seed in there. So then she asked for someone to help her come cover the seeds. Nobody came. Not one chicken in the whole 
and the whole hen house came out to help her cover the seed. So she proceeded to place the seed. She covered the seed. So she asked for someone to help her cultivate the seeds, keep the, the worms out, the weeds pulled, and none of the other chickens, not even a rooster, came out to help her. Not one. So then she said, well, you know, it's almost harvest time. I'm going to have to go ahead and, and, and get the seed out of the ground. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, we're going to eat. Nobody came to help her. So she wasn't deterred. Harvest time came. She got the seed out. And she said, I'm going to bake some bread. We're all going to eat. Not one chicken or rooster helped her bake that bread. But lo and behold, the little red hen had that bread smelling good, sitting on the table. And every rooster and every hen and every chick in the hen house came out and took a seat at the table. Sometimes you have to do something that is for the betterment of other people. We should all want to do something to help the next guy out. And sometimes you have to do it all by yourself. You have to do it in spite of all the naysayers, in spite of the fact that it doesn't look like you're going to get the job done alone. You have to do it in spite of all the problems and the hard work. But you are still supposed to want to, to leave something, not all for yourself, but to share with others. And that is what building a business and being in this particular study with all of you helps us do. It helps us learn how to build no matter how hard we have to toil, how long we have to do it alone before we get a little help. But when we get that harvest at the table, it's a harvest for everyone. Now, Justin Pinkston, as I said last week, did say that a simple error in judgment compounded over time um, could have tremendous disastrous effects. And I took that and twisted it and said, well, that means that if you have a strong belief and you have vision and you have faith, that positiveness compounded over time can have wonderful, fantabulous implications for generations to come. Because when we know better, we can do better. It is our job to do better. We can be better by choice, and we can be better because we know better. Now, what are the ad advantages of um, having an inheritance or heritage? You can take the high ground. The next generation can take the high ground on something. Um, they can be an authority on something. They've got a little boost up to become more of an authority on things that are in the future. Um, it gives you favor when you have an inheritance or a heritage or a legacy. It gives you the ability, the next generation, the ability to, to master something or be dominant or be in a, a um, position of leadership and to lead of others. One of the words that I liked that I found the most when it said what are the advantages of something was like it was sovereignty. When you have an advantage over something, you have a sovereignty. And to me, that's the blessing of the Lord. You have purpose, you have well-being, you have the capacity capacity to do better. You have a premium, you have the lion's share, you have an abundance, and you have an amplified chance. You have an enriched opportunity. All of those are considered advantages, and that's what happens when you have an inheritance or a heritage that you leave for that next generation, seven generations down. Um, Deuteronomy, no, well, so Deuteronomy says, God himself has been tending your land. That was from Shanika Byers. If God has been tending your land and God is perfect and full of abundance, don't you think, like the little red hen, that when you finish with your business and all of those things that God has given you to do, when you imagine what you can do and step into that creative, uh, creativity with your seed, don't you think there's going to be an abundance left over for the next generation? He's not taking anything from you. As a matter of fact, the Bible is all about not just getting to heaven, but the journey of how to get there. And all along, it's talking about people that were helped or helping some, some others to get to where they 
are supposed to be like, I'm going to go with this. This wasn't in my notes, but I'm going to stick it out here. My name is Aquila. Aquila is a biblical name. There was Aquila and Priscilla. They were husband and wife. I got the guy's name. I already had a cousin named Priscilla. Go figure. So they were friends of Paul. And it was Paul was traveling, Priscilla and Aquila, or Aquila and Priscilla, opened their house and they allowed Paul to come in and stay with them. And they helped him. And they became good friends. So as it happens, when Paul started to write the letters to the churches, Aquila and Priscilla were now out traveling and they were spreading the word and they were going to different cities teaching the word because Christianity was very new then. And Paul wrote on their behalf because they had been there for him. He asked the churches and the people, these are my friends, Aquila and Priscilla, look out for them, take care of them when they come to your town because they have been good to me. So if that is how Paul saw Priscilla and Aquila, who he kind of met, and they just, you know, supped together, hung out. You know, he got to hang out on their sofa or whatever, you know, back in the day. Then imagine what God does when he gives you something, and he plants a seed, and you can share it. Now, my thing was, I was thinking, well, Lord, where do I get the seed from? Where do I go get the seed? And then I thought of the chicken or the egg. Which came first, the chicken or the egg? But if, do I get the seed and then plant it? Like, are you going to give me the seed and show it to me? But then I started remembering in Genesis that God created everything first. And then he put the seed in what he created so that the fruit could be, you could bear fruit. But he created everything in seven days. He didn't plant a seed and wait, you know, to harvest time to get the trees. He planted every tree. He made every animal. So the chicken, I finally figured out this week from the chicken and the egg, the chicken came first. So my seed is already in there. This chicken, this little red hen, it's already got the seed that it need to plant. And in what we're doing today here in this place with Dr. Harvey, we are learning how to plant our seeds in a biblical fashion, according to the word of God. And if you think about it, for the ladies that are out there, I like to read the book of Ruth. That's one of my favorite books. And the book of Ruth, I suddenly realized it's all about the harvest of kinsmanship. You know, it was one of Naomi's kinsmen and Ruth's kinsmen that actually stepped up to the plate and started to give her, glean the, the harvest left over for her, and eventually took her on. He went to the elders to see if anybody else was interested, and then he married her. And I thought, well, that's kinsmanship. That's inheritance. Naomi didn't think she had anything. She told her daughters to go she said, don't stay. I, you know, my husband is gone. My sons are gone. You, you guys go back to your family. I don't have anything. And she even told her family when she got back to her hometown, you know, don't call me that. You know, I've been through so much trouble and stuff. That, that name doesn't suit me anymore. She was feeling really down and really depressed about what she had. But her legacy, her seed, had already been planted it was already there. It was already in her daughter-in-law who stayed with her and didn't leave. And from that seed, we still have all of the heirs all the way down to Jesus. We're still here. So don't ever think it's too late or you have too little because God is real good at using little old me to come up and talk to all of you and hopefully say something that you guys can put in a different perspective. Um, the types of legacy that you could leave for just a few are everything from your belief to your values to your ethics, um, money and property. That's always good. Um, you could be like the person that has... You're an alumni of a school, so you've left them the le legacy of attending a fine college or championing your passion for some charity that you are now leaving the legacy of helping that charity. So never think that there's not something that you have a legacy to leave. I was thinking about um, last week we had 
um, the passing of Senator John Lewis. And John Lewis talked about getting into good trouble, which I found amazing, amazing for a man of his stature. And there are children that are out there now that are um, taking pictures of what's happening and they're challenging their schools. And one of the girls I heard was asked, like, why did you... Um, why did you do this if you knew you could get kicked out of school? And she said, well, it sounded like good trouble. I thought, there's the legacy. That was one of his favorite sayings. It's what he did. And although he was speaking on voting rights, what he taught the next generation was always be ready to get into good trouble. Right? So I thought, that's not something that he saw coming that there would be high schoolers in other cities willing to pull out their cell phone and take pictures to challenge the adults about things that are happening, sending our kids back to school because they thought it was worthy of the good trouble. But that's a legacy for you. That's part of his inheritance. And the last thing I want to leave you with is a story by um, Reverend Marion J. Miller. Marion Miller tells a story about this one little lady. She lived in this town and she had hopes and big dreams and she had faith. And she never gave up. Her hopes and her dreams didn't always come the way she wanted them, but she was always persevering. She was always hanging in there, going through. And, and the word got around to some of the other towns that there was this little lady who was, you know, 5 foot 11 and she had a little bit of faith, but she was always out there. She was always positive. She was always smiling. She was always persevering because she wanted to leave the world a little better. She believed that she could leave the world better. She thought, she was like Miss Michelle. She, li she lived on Belief Street and Dream Avenue. She kept on going. So one lady decided, one of the ladies, two towns over, decides, I'm going to go find out now, how does she get this faith thing up when she's struggling just like the rest of us, okay? I know there's, you know, a crisis or recession or something going on. So I'm going to see what does she do to get that faith up. So she she jogs over to the other town and she finds a little lady and they say, oh yeah, she's over there. She lived in that house. So she knocks on the door and the lady comes out and she says, are you the lady that's got all that faith? That's making sure all everybody's happy all the time and you're always seeing the positive side of the... And the lady said, no, I'm not her. And she said, well, they told me you lived right here. And she said, no, I'm not the lady with a whole lot of faith. She said, I'm the lady with a little bit of faith. But I got a God who's really big. <laughs> and I don't have to have but a little bit of faith because my God has got it all done already. So I'm going to leave you with that. All you have to do is to like just care a little bit, believe a little bit, plant that seed that's already in you. Let pastor help mentor you with where you're going. Don't be afraid to step out there. And not only will you then build for yourself, because what God has for you to do to get to heaven and to bless others, you know he's going to be blessing you and making a way. As you do this, it's, it's coming. It's no way he's just going to send you out there in, in a barren land and just bless others. The price has already been uh, paid for us to be abundant. He says that we're abundantly blessed above and beyond anything we could dream or ask for. I believe his word. I believe when he says a good man leaves an inheritance, I'm going to be doing that. I believe when he says, I know the plans I have for you, not to harm you, but to prosper you. I believe that. And if I'm here to prosper, he's going to prosper me. He's going to prosper the seed he has in me so that that seed can continue to bear good fruit. And that has been my prayer. Lord, make me a servant. Show me how you would like me to bear good fruit for you. And that's how I ended up here. And so I thank you tonight for listening to the sound of my voice. I hope this has been instrumental and helpful to you. And I am about to get out of here now and ask Pastor to come up. We have uh, Dr. Harvey. He is our he is our, the head of this evening service. He is the head of Increase International Ministry. He is. Um, 
an avid worker in his community. He loves what he does. He loves people. And he's got all the facts to back it up. He, he has got that information down pat. He knows where to find it and how to put it all together so that we can understand it. And I aspire to be like him one day. I'm working on it. And I thank you, Pastor, for asking me to come back and talk to your parishioners. Have a good evening. Hey, Amen. She started scaring me all that stuff she was talking about. You can hold on to that. God bless you. Thank you, sir. Well, praise God. We get God the glory for that. Amen. Praise God. Praise God. Amen. You know, in sessions such as this, I try not to, you know, prepare anything. I just, you know, wait to hear it and then, you know, jog something down and see what God will have us to go from there. And um, one of the things that really stuck out to me was when she was talking about, um, you know, the hen. And when the hen was doing certain things, preparation, no one participated until the full manifestations came. And then everyone wanted to gather around because they saw the manifestations of it. And sometimes you got to understand this is that um, your friends can be your enemies, but they can be good enemies. When I say good enemies, they can be an enemy against what you're doing, not an enemy against you personally. OK. And that's important to understand that. So you have loved ones, you have family members, they may not see it, so they, it's a, they're an enemy against it. You know, they're questioning it, et cetera, et cetera. But that don't mean they're personally an enemy against you. And we have to learn that, if, um, that one of the reasons why we have to prosper, not so much that we prosper ourselves, but those who are enemy against what we were doing, and some of those who are, you know, just enemy against you personally. You know, God still wants them to bless, to be blessed. And in uh, leaving an inheritance, someone has to be a forerunner. That means that someone has to run by themselves or run with a small group of people. And anytime you're doing business, you know, especially in this community, uh, you, you, to my sign language, in this community, you know, we, we're basically small groups. But in other ethnic groups, they kind of like, they cluster, they got a bigger cluster of group of people. And I truly believe the reason for that is because uh, we have a whole lot to offer. I believe we have a whole lot to offer. I believe that we'll be the remnant that God will use to really bring forth a major rush or a magnitude measure of harvest. And as we look here in the scriptures, I want to show you something. Um, and that's in um, 1 Samuel chapter 30. And that's when Ziklag was burned with fire. And we, we saw how um, David was about to go forward, and we can see that a lot of inheritance has been stolen or has been hidden or have not been presented correctly, properly. You know, a lot of people think their inheritance is turn around seven times, fall out, and then Monday, it'd be in the mailbox. I, um, I don't know if that works. That didn't work for me. You know, but I'll be turning around every Sunday, fall out. <laughs> I don't even need a usher. Bump my head on something in the mailbox. I'm all right. And so we have been taught incorrectly about inheritance. Heritage takes research, understanding. Um, it takes an open mind, expanded knowledge, and what to do with it and how to take it to the next level. So I just use Ziklag for, uh, just for a, a little ir um, um, illustration on how some of our inheritance was stolen or we was um, distracted by destruction or devastating moments in our life. And he talked about how Ziklag, it was burnt with fire. And David had just accomplished something great. And now these people they'd have with him, now they, they speak about stoning David. You know, I'm just going to just flow through it a little bit. But they carried away their sons, their wives, their daughters. They carried away all their goods. They just, and they burned up everything. They took everything that was valuable and precious. They took it with them. So they took away their, their possessions and their inheritance. Okay, so their children had in it, didn't have anything. Um, they uh, they took their possessions and they took the, the, the heirs as well. And so the people spake about stoning David because David was going to go after this, you know. And so after David um, was challenged with his own people, and then David put on the ephod, which represents a covenant that God has with the 12 tribes of Israel. And David said, Lord, if I go, first of all, he encouraged himself in the Lord is God. He said, if I go, uh, am I going to recover? And God said, hey, you're going to go and you're going to recover all without fail. He said that you're going to recover all without fail. But notice the steps that David took. And so anytime you go into business, legacy, inheritance, you have to um, acknowledge God on the way about going about to get it. Because, you see, you could be doing something and not be encouraged in the Lord your God to do it. You could be encouraged by someone who 
talk to you about a possession or business opportunity, and you're encouraged that way, but you want to make sure that your encouragement is coming from the Lord your God. Amen? Amen. I get a plenty of business opportunity. I'm looking at three of them right now to see, okay, which one is the most difficult, which one's more profitable, which one I got to, you know, do more time, this is going to fit this, this is going to fit this endeavor, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And I encouraged myself in the Lord, so I said, now, Lord, you show me which one to do. All of them will work, but which one do you want me to do? Which one is fitting? So I encouraged myself in the Lord, not in the prophets, that it would yield, okay? So, so I can leave an inheritance and things we want to do for the ministry and things around, around the world. And so... That those steps are so important. You understand your covenant, get encouraged with God and understand you will recover. You will recover all without fail. You don't want to get into something and then, you know, it, it doesn't go the way that you want to go. That happens sometimes. It's part of you know, our human journey. And then as you go forward, you'll see that. Um, let me just throw the scriptures out to you so Zach can just put it up for you because I don't want him just searching. <laughs> I don't know where you're at, Pastor, but I'm going to find you in a minute. Amen. Um, in verse um, uh, verse 9, so David went, he and the 600 men that were with him, and came to the brook Bessor, where there that met, that those were left behind stayed. So there were some that couldn't make it. You know, sometimes people, they'll say, hey, yeah, you know, I'm with you. Then they you know they, they can't make it. They just can't go. They don't have the strength. They don't have the wisdom. They have the capacity, the capability, the understanding, the insight, or just the level of comfort, confidence that you and I may have. And would David allow them to stay by the stuff? They stayed behind. Some people are going to stay behind. You can't drag people behind. I mean, you can't drag people forward who already, you know, are going to stay behind. Sometimes we try to drag people. You can't drag everybody. You just can't do it. You got to go forward because you try to drag people who are staying behind. You find yourself behind and you find yourself not going forward. Okay. Can I get a witness? All right. And so they stayed behind. And so David, when he went forward, then he met a servant from the enemies camp that, that robbed them and took their inheritance and took their heirs, okay? Well, I want you to understand something. If you allow someone to take your inheritance, why should this is very important. I'm just hearing this from God right now. Why should they are also stealing your heirs as well? Because if you don't have an inheritance, then you have what you're going to leave. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? They are heir, but how can you leave an heir? Nothing. Well, how they can, you can't inherit something, nothing, and be an heir, okay? You have to have something. In order to have an heir to give them something too, all right? And so, um, so the, the servant of the, the, the enemy was left behind because he was sick. And there will always be someone who, who have vital information for you. There will always be someone who have vital information for you. Even though you're trying to restore property or restore inheritance of things that were stolen from you or taken, or et cetera, et cetera, as I just mentioned, but there will always be someone with vital information. Notice something that David didn't overlook him because he was not like a business person or, you know, he, had a, he, he possessed a lot. He was sick and he was left behind. Now you got the people. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Just here it is now. Now you have a group of people, men, I think about 400 that were left behind. Then you had a servant of the enemy that was left behind. Now the people that was left behind with David was still going to be careful, but the person who was left behind from the enemy was this stuff there to, to die. You, you, you understand what? That's the difference in it. That we don't leave people behind and that he was sick and, he, and David was going to minister. Him, and he said, listen, man, he said, after, after I, you know, if I tell you this and, and, you, and you, you get me healed, he said, promise not to kill me. He said, don't, don't kill me. Because some people say, yeah, just tell him what you know. Then, okay, that's it. Bam, bust him upside the head. Thank you. But David ministered to him and David got him healed and David restored him. Now, so David used that information. He went down to the enemy camp and God was with David, et cetera, et cetera. And they took everything back and they recovered all without fail. Then when as they was coming back, watch this now. And I'm going to look at this verse right here. Then in verse um, 20, in verse 20, then answer. Well, let's look at verse 21. Then David came to the 200. I said 400 was 200, which were faint that they could not follow David whom they had made also to abide at the brook Bessor. And they went forth to meet David and to meet the people that were with him. And when David came near to the people, he saluted them. He still honored respected them. Then verse 22, then answered all the wicked men and, and men of Beel and those that were with David said, because they went not with us, we would not invite them to our prayer party. They ain't, they ain't coming. He said, we'll not give them all of the spoil that we have recovered. 
say to every man his wife, his children, and they may lead them away and depart. And so he said, listen, we're not going to give them nothing because they didn't go with us. You got to understand, first of all, they were not capable of going. You got to recognize that. Some people are not capable, some of by fear or previous experiences or things to that degree, or they just you know, don't have the confidence for that. And you have, I learned to pass the people where business is concerned. They say, well, I passed them where, you know, ministry and learning, you know, how to walk with the Holy Spirit, how to well, learn how to pray, et cetera, et cetera. It's the same thing. And God said, I want you to pastor that person in that area. Because if you don't pastor, you don't minister to them in that area, then it becomes a frustration to you. Because I've been standing up here for years talking about the same thing, but just in different manners. You know, so you deal with someone who's trying to go forward, but not from the pulpit stand. You have to deal with them the same way as you were standing in the pulpit. So it's a pastor and it's a ministry there. Because if you don't, you're not going to recognize the areas in their life where they really need ministry at or they really need business help at. Okay? Because everybody cares about their family to some degree. And so as we uh, minister to them, that, that level will grow and will grow. And sooner or later, you're going to get a breakthrough. Something's going to happen. I heard from one person, they'll say, hey, my spouse is like gun to hold with it. They, you know, they, they like this. And they learn. They doing this, et cetera, et cetera. I know that came from the pulpit. Because they've been hearing word. They've been hearing word. They brings, they have life to it. And then finally the opportunity came. And they said, OK, I'm going to do it. You just got to stick with them long enough until something happens. But you got to keep going forward as well, too. You follow me? Go, you know, don't leave him too far behind, but you still got to go forward because David didn't wait. David still went forward, but he went forward with them in his heart. All right. Now, so we see that, you know, the wicked man said, let only those who have, you know, who went with us only give to their children and to their spouse. He said, and um, let them go their way and depart. Go to verse um, um, 23. And then they then said, David, you shall not do so, my brother. With that which the Lord has given what? He said us. You see that? And I'm going to tell you, there's, there's people, my family, they don't, they don't have a hoot of understanding of things I'm doing in business. I said, don't even worry about it. You know, just going to take care of what we need to remodel the house because we have a family home. Just going to take care of this. It's going to do this and that. Don't, don't even worry about it. You know, we're going to get it done. And it's, just, just don't worry about it. OK. <laughs> and so therefore, um, he said the given to us who have preserved us. And delivered the company that came against us into our hands. The next verse. In verse 24. For whom will hearken to you in this matter? But as his part is that goeth down to the battle. So shall his part be that tarry by the stuff. They shall part alike. You see that? He said even you guys who went down to the battle. Those who couldn't go to the battle. He said we still going to share this inheritance or our recovery, our, our restoration, our, our, our possession and our heirs and our family alike. And that's the mentality you have to have. You have to have that mentality when it comes to inheritance because that's that's the mentality of a king. If I, that's the mentality of the king, the mentality of the king, that means that your, your heart is enlarged over, more over than the stuff. Your heart is towards the people. It's towards your family. You follow me? So you have your heart towards your family and people. Man, I'm going to tell you, you know, it's going to be easy to, to get wealth. It's going to get easy to get it. It's not going to be hard at all. But you have to have your heart towards them. So what good is, you know, having and giving an inheritance or uh, a legacy and you don't you know when you care for the people in your family? Amen. I remember one time we had a, uh, our church location. We had a location on um, the boulevard. And this a gentleman. He had it was a storefront church. He had a, a business. And, um, and I was just talking. Sometimes I go in and just talk with him and everything. When I was, you know, in office hours during the week. And, you know, he like a cuss a lot. I mean, this dude with just cussing, man. He don't care who he's. You know, you're a preacher. But that's just the vocabulary. He said, I'm not leaving my children. Blank and blank. I can't stand it. Blank and blank. And this is blank and blank. I mean, he was just like, he said, because they ain't nothing. This and that. that. And he, he had all this stuff, but he didn't have nobody to leave it to. He didn't want to leave it to his family. You follow me? He didn't want to leave it to his family. Then I heard of another man. I think I met him, too. Um, now, I think I heard about him from a person that I know. And he was, he was a carpenter or electrician or something like that. He came across a lot of wealth. He said, now my children can't handle this wealth. He said, but what I can do, he said, I'm not going to give it all to them. He said, I'm going to put it in this, uh, I forgot what the name, the terminology. You might know what I'm talking about. I, I'm going to put it in this account, and it's going to generate the money for them annually. What is it called? 
trust as a trust account. So he said it's going gonna, it's gonna to generate $200,000 a year for them, the same amount of money, so they won't waste the money. So when you love your family, there's ways that you can leave things for them without them destroying it all. But first of all, you still got to love your family. Yeah, I know everybody's family ain't the same. You still got to love them. Amen. You still got to love them. If you love them, you know, they might love you later on. <laughs> After the funeral and the will has been read. Amen. <laughs> then they're really going to love you. <laughs> and, and the good works and the good deeds you do. And not, not only just leave uh, an inheritance for. Now, we ain't talking about nobody dying soon, so don't even worry about that. But always consider an organization as well, things to that degree, like um, Urban Harvey Ministries and things to that degree. We could take care of the paperwork right out the service. Amen. <laughs> Are they clapping for real? All right. Are we going to do your paperwork? We'll process it and get it going. Amen. Now, nah, but uh, the serious though, but also if you think, thank you, Holy Spirit, if you think about wealth, generation, generation wealth for your family and also for organization that God got to give you enough for both. You follow? You got to get enough of both. And that's important. And that's, that's right. I mean, God is looking for someone who will participate. You say, well, Lord, and I'm going to just go ahead and work and try to work. He said, I ain't asked you to do that. I'm just asking you, can you be a conduit? Can you be a vessel that you and I can covenant and work together with, that I can challenge this wealth towards you, that I can get out of the hands of the wicked and into your hands? Okay? Now, in the hand doesn't mean that it's going to leave their checking account and it's going to arrive in your checking account. God is not asking for your checking account information. He's not asking for that. What he's saying, that what they had developed, because he said, I will make the wicked work and toil and sweat to create and develop and establish things. Then he said, then I'm going to make them break it down and make it easy so you can put it in your hands so you can utilize it. Because in your hands, not in your wallet, <laughs> not in your account, but in your hands. That means that you can, you can, you can um, operate it. You can execute it. You can use it. You can do it. And now today, everything's based like clicking a link and doing this and taking a picture of something, scanning something. It's real easy. But all the hard work is behind the scene. And that is basically coming to our hands. That's one of the ways we talk right now. It's a lot of wealth that's being translated, transferred from the hands of the wicked into our hands. But some people won't stick out their hand to go ahead and use it. It's real simple. Anybody can do it. It's, it's very simple. You just got to get some attention, some time to it. But he, here we see how we have to um, give attention and heart and concern to those who cannot make it, those who can't go to the next level. You know, there's some new things you could hear on the, I can say on the news. I guess you go hear it on the news too. Uh, another organization we just established. And uh, <laughs> you got two th new things that's coming out that I haven't shared with the church yet. And um, it, it, it's blessed. It, it is powerful. And how we're going to be helping others in that area. And it's going to be, you know, everything we do is going to be global. And uh, it's going to be global. Because we talk to countries, different countries around the world every day. Every day we're talking to two or three different countries. And so, you know, that's why our heart is so, I, I, I'm going to have a whole lot of stuff. We're going to have a whole lot of stuff. Yesterday, I'm going to tell you, I had so many transactions that I got, I got mixed up. I didn't know what to do. Money just kept on coming. I got confused. And God said, that's Deuteronomy right there. Blessings take you over, overtake you and take you over. He say, hit you like a running back, you don't know what to do. And that's where we are. I'm going to tell you, and you don't, only thing, the qualified to, to get there is to allow God to use your heart with his heart. That's all. Amen. Allow him to use your heart with his heart. He said, let me put my heart in yours. Let me, let me operate from there. Okay. And so we can see some, because the reason why I'm saying this way is so we can take the, the, the hustler mentality off of getting inheritance. Because, see, if you, if you go in as a hustle, I got to work it, work it dead. If you do it like that, you're going to make bad decisions. You can lose everything overnight. Um, you lose the anointing. Uh, you, you won't be on your ministry assignment and things to that degree. And so that's why I'm sharing with, with, with you in this manner here. And so one of our avenues and assignment now is making many people rich. It's making them rich. And I always ask the God, how can I help this person? And, you know, a lot of persons that I say, you, you sit right in this room today. Right? How can I help this person go for? How can I help this person get money? How can I do this program fit this person? This is that. I can easily say, well, forget everybody. I, I can just use this and fly on by myself. But I, I'm not doing that because that's not God's uh, protocol. That's not the way he wants to do it. And so I'm always saying, okay, then he said, okay, trigger. Then do this one. It is trigger. Do that one. So I'm going the way that he's telling me to do it. Amen. And we learn some, some things on the way. But, you know, when you understand the field, they already God always have you straight. You want to help make other people rich God's way. Man, I'm going to tell you, you you're talking about a, a beautiful life, man. You have to worry about 
You know what the government going to do, your pension plan, your social security, your disability check. You don't have to worry about this stuff because God will give you a, 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 man, I'll tell you, a favor profusely. This is amazing. I mean, it just, it's just mind-blowing. It just got to shift your mind. Because you shift your mind, you shift your reality, okay? Now, in closing, we got a lot of time, but in closing, no, this is my first close. I get 12 of them. <laughs> Not just joking. Out. But in closing, you got to understand this. To, to leave an inheritance, you have to have an inheritance or a heritage mentality. You can't just be a workaholic. Okay, you just can't be a person who just want to make money because a person who makes money is not, they don't have an inheritance mentality. Everything from the Bible, as you said, all, everything we receive, everything is an inheritance. Even the Holy Spirit is a down payment on us to seal us and to lock us in and guarantee our inheritance. Everything's about, the angels are in, is given to us, but those are our heirs, inheritance. If I, we are heirs with God and joint heirs. All this, it's all this inheritance. But a lot of people think, I'm going to go to church, I'm going to go to service. I'm going to read the Bible. You understand, you're not read, you reading a will, you read an inheritance. <laughs> Amen. This is all these things. So we know how to con- conduct ourselves instead of, instead of trying to get a message out of it and, and preach to somebody so we can get a good amen out of the crowd. It's all about an inheritance. And so when we see that, we go forward and God works with those who understand inheritance. Matter of fact, when, when God um, in the Bible, when he, um, he slayed the Philistines, the, the Amalites, the, uh, uh, all the parasites, parasites and <laughs> all those different people down the road, where he, he was protecting an inheritance. When he's talking about Jesus of the 40, 42 generation, he was protected in inheritance so Jesus would come on the scene. All they had to do with inheritance so you and I can be here today and therefore God's continuing to push it forward. He gave Jesus so that he would be the firstborn of many brothers. Amen. It's all an inheritance. And so you and I already have right to it. We just got to know how to filter out the, the, the toxation of the world as being a workaholic or being a person who lived from paycheck or payment to payment or deposit to deposit and be a person who lived from the blood of Jesus already. Everything's been paid and provided and paid in full for us. And the only thing we have to do is go out and operate in the direction of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. That's basically how it, it flows from right there. You got, to, you got to get this is more than a teaching tool just to share with somebody. That we get a degree and say, I, I'm a licensed minister. No, we're supposed to minister the inheritance. <laughs> Amen. We're supposed to articulate this will to you. This is what belongs to you. Amen. He, he has, he's given us all things pertaining to life. That's inheritance and godliness and divine nature. That's all it is. It's, it's an inheritance. So we got to look at it correctly. He already allotted out property for us in the book of Acts. He already cut the property and laid it out for us. He said, this is a lot has been laid. He said, Lord, your line is followed for me in pleasant places. Lord, I thank you, Lord God. You protected my, my property. It's already, he already cut it out for us. That's why the land of Israel is being protected. God said, that's your land. That's your property. Amen. And so it's important for us to, to see it that way and then also have that mentality so God could continue to channel the revelation, continue to channel the wealth to, through us to other people. Now, when I was coming up in high school, I don't know where this guy got. I guess he was just a, a bootleg prophet, didn't know it, but he always called me Red Mike. I mean, I don't know about, I was in ninth grade, he called me Red Mike. I said, man, what are you talking about? Don't call me no Red Mike. Man, what's wrong with you, man? <laughs> I said, because, you know, I heard about Red Mike back in the day. That one, you know, now, he was teaching correctly our generation. That generation was not ready for him. That's all it was. They weren't ready for him. And, but I heard that he was a greedy preacher and da, da, da. But he was preaching confessions, um, inheritance, all the stuff we preach preaching today. He was preaching that. They just weren't ready for him. Now, watch this now. I don't know about the slick hair and all that stuff like that. But in there, you know, I don't got you know, some pomade or something right there. Get some waves in. But watch this now. He was calling me Reb Ike, Reb Ike for, for years. And then my grandfather, my father's father, which I didn't know was my grandfather, he, he called me by two names. He called me Reb and Money. He said, come here, Reb. Come here, Money. Come here, Reb. Come here, Money. He didn't say he called me, just called me Lewis, man. Everybody else called me. He called me Reb and he called me Money. Now, we know that Reb is association with ministry, but really, it just I like to correct things. You no, know, we, we don't suppose he called each other Reverend. But the Bible said in the book of Psalms, only his name is Reverend. So there's no Reverend. Harvey, there's no Reverend um, Perm, no Reverend Davis, no Reverend whatever. That's no Reverend. Only his name is Reverend. We just took that out. And religion messed up everything. They just take all the glory from God. I'll tell you. But anyhow, but he used to call me that Reb and call me money. And now I'm in this area where I'm ministering in these areas. And I am so loaded with finances, it don't make no sense. And guess what? I don't have to have money in the bank in order to be spendable. 
Because I'm just like, it doesn't matter if I don't have money bank. I'm already loaded. I just, it just, and then money start coming. I don't know how it happened, but it keep it just works. I don't know how it does it. You know, and then when it happens, like you have no problem administrating and minister to others where finances are concerned. All right? <laughs> Praise God. All right, I'm tired now. I'm ready to eat. <laughs> Amen. So, guys, let's, let's tap into that. Let's make something happen. Let's make something big happen. Believe in you. Don't, don't judge yourself where you are. Don't count yourself out. Don't look at yourself and say, well, you know, Grandma, ha <laughs> Pastor Harvey, well, don't look at it. Look and say, Lord, I thank you, me too. Yeah. Say that. Say, Lord, thank you, me too. Yeah. Lord, you. Amen. Amen. Now, you'd be amazed of the things that happen. And I, I'm going to share the other stuff with you later on before it hits the news. Uh, I'll probably share it next week once we finish, you know, getting the paperwork and stuff like that straight. And, and share that with you guys. And um, God is just good. And I'm always looking, Lord, how can we make that nation rich? Lord, how can we do that? Show me. I keep asking. If I acknowledge him in all my ways, he will always direct my path. And the people that he's bringing on board, it, it is fascinating. I said, wow. And everybody's saying yes. <laughs> they say yes. I said, okay, all right. I said, what? Well, they said, oh, the Lord told me to go ahead. I said, okay, all right. And we're going to put this to us. All right. I said, that is awesome, man. Watch. Thank you, Holy Spirit. If you have your mind, on other people, you will experience very little nose in your life. Very little nose. All right, let's stop right there. All right, let's stop right there. Woo! All right, got to stop. <laughs> Thank you for tuning in to the Increase International Ministries broadcast today. We pray that the Word of God has richly blessed and transformed your life. To know more about us, you may visit our website at increaseinternationalministries.com. Or connect with us on Facebook at Increase, capital I-N-T, apostrophe L, Ministries. Or contact us by phone at 804-658-4896. Remember, wherever you go, may increase in favor flow.